Hi, welcome to this Grace in Motion at Home lesson. If this is your first time, I would encourage you to go to our website, gimsimple.net, and check out the resources there. With Grace in Motion in this series, what we do each time is pray, go, baptize, teach. So what you have here in this lesson is just the teach segment. So again, I encourage you to go to gimsimple.net and look at the video resources that will walk you through the pray, go, baptize steps that you can have each time you meet together with a group or when you're reflecting on your own. So today, here we go. We're going to jump into John 5. Our series is the Gospel of John, and this one is called Pick Up Your Mat. So first, I encourage you to find a Bible, either digitally or an old-fashioned, good old big book Bible. <laughs> John chapter 5 is what you're looking for in that. It's in the New Testament. And today, spend some time together in your group reading John 5, verses 1 through 14. Go ahead and read that together as a group and then have a discussion around this question. What do you notice and what do you wonder about this section of scripture? What are the observations you make and what are the questions you have after reading this passage? So go ahead and pause the video and read and have that discussion now. All right, so as you read, this part of John 5 is about an event that happens at the pool of Bethesda. And what you need to know about that is that there's actually a couple of pools here that are surrounded by four porticos. This is a huge, massive site complex. Um, Archaeology has shown this. Uh, it's a popular, well-known site that has been confirmed by sources outside of the Bible uh, at the time of Jesus. So this was a well-known place and a very huge area that was very well-known. So as you reflect more on this passage that you read, what do you learn about people from this passage? And what do we learn about Jesus from this passage? Go ahead and pause and talk about that now. So another discussion question for you to consider is what do you make of this question that Jesus asks to the paralyzed man? Do you want to get well? So he's coming up on somebody who has been paralyzed for almost four decades and asks the question, do you want to get well? Also, I want to uh, shed some light on a belief that was common at that time. There was a common belief that the angel of the Lord periodically came down and stirred the waters in this pool. And if you could be the first to enter the water after the stirring, then you could be healed. So it's kind of this um, spiritualized fairy tale idea of how the healing process worked. All right, the final question to consider here is, is this story more description, just telling us what happened then to give us that information? Or is it prescription in a sense to tell us what could happen or should happen now? Think about that and explain your answer. Think if it's all of one or all of the other or a little bit of both and why you think the way you do. I know that I could take this passage a lot of different ways as far as trying to personally apply it and consider what is my mat in my life that I need to pick up and walk with and reflect on the question that Jesus is asking, do I want to get well as, as well? And so the mat that we all have could be any kind of thing. It could be a physical issue like in this passage. It could be emotional, relational, anything like that. It might be uh, a fear of rejection. It might be depression. It might be all kinds of things that um, could be affecting us. And Jesus asking us, do we want to get well? And how do we want to get well? And what would it look like to take your mat and walk? But that may be a little bit of an over-spiritualizing interpretation of this. So the question comes back to, is this really just meant to be descriptive of telling us an account of something that happened so we learn more about Jesus? Or is there a prescriptive element to this, like personal application that we can walk away with? in this situation. 
So go ahead and st pause the video and have a conversation around that idea. All right, well, hopefully you had a great conversation and that brings us to the end where it's your chance to acknowledge and recognize something someone else said or did during this time that you had together and you can appreciate them and thank them for that at this time as you wrap up. As always, act with grace and simplify faith. Have a great day.